I'm delighted to be here with you today in Dermot to, uh, to discuss Be Ready uh, and its launch. Uh, I guess before we get to the meat of Be Ready in particular, uh, could you help me sort of set the scene a bit? Uh, it's a very challenging time for development economics. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, The Economist put on its cover, uh, why is the world's poor stopped catching up? Convergence seems to have stalled. Extreme poverty is, is no longer falling. And, you know, a decade ago, it seemed like we, we maybe had a lot more figured out. So what's happened? All right. So first, thank you, Alice. And we're, uh, we are really grateful that you and Claire have traveled all this way to be with us today. Uh, so you may notice that actually all of you may notice that uh, Norman and I are both a little nervous today. Uh, and the reason is not that we have any doubts about the Be Ready report. We think that Valeria and her team have done a wonderful job. We have no doubts about the report. The reason why I'm nervous, and I think Norman too, is that Professor Robert Barrow is here, and uh, he is both Norman's teacher and mine. So I learned macroeconomics from him at the University of Chicago before he decided that the quality of students like me in Chicago weren't, was not good enough. And so he had to move to Harvard to get better students like Norman. Uh, but I am really happy to see Bob Barrow here. Uh, a, 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 a huge welcome to you from all of us here at the World Bank, Bob. Uh, so actually, um, so I do want to tell you that the Be Ready project, it's a big deal for us. And you know, that uh, we were doing the ease of doing business ratings and so on. And we stopped that uh, about three years ago in September, 2021. So to answer your question now, you know, between that time and now, uh, the world economy has, has gone to hell in a handbasket essentially, right? I mean, essentially advanced economies are doing less well than they did before the pandemic. Middle income countries, many of them, other than a few exceptions like India and Indonesia, they're not doing particularly well either as compared to the thing. So everything is sort of settling to a lower growth equilibrium, essentially, than compared to compared to before the pandemic. And by the way, that, Alice, was even lower than what, what had happened before the, global, before the global financial crisis, right? So a step down, 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 right? Both times. So, and uh, what, what basically has happened, I think, is that governments have uh, basically tanked their public finances, right? High levels of debt, very little fiscal space for public investment and so on. Consumers took up a little bit of that burden and actually spent so on. And that's, and that's kind of waning too now. So the only thing left is private investment. So in fact, actually, if you think about the importance of private investment three or four years ago and compare it to now, it's much greater. So we, we are going to rely on private investment to pull us out of the woods now. And be ready, it basically you know, breaks down what countries have to do to make, uh, to, to make businesses start to invest again, right? So that's how, uh, so, so I actually feel that the three years that we have not had the Be Ready project and we didn't have the Doing Business project were the three years that, that really did matter for private investment. So we are, you know, three years late, but as they say, better late than never. Yeah. Okay, and you, you mentioned in your answer there that um, you, you haven't been doing the Ease of Doing Business Index. That was a huge deal for the bank. Um, I mean, I, I recall I used to be, before I was a journalist, I used to be a, an economist in Southeast Asia, and I would sort of build these little tables of key economic indicators that I would show to investors, so economic growth, inflation, credit, cycle metrics, um, and the ease of doing business in index was always on those little scorecards. When I would talk to finance ministers uh, in, in emerging markets, they would always sort of uh, sort of talk proudly of the things they were doing to improve their, their rankings on the ease of doing business um, measure. It was hugely influential. Indeed. Why the need for a revamp? And what do you hope um, will be the sort of the, the influence that Be Ready might be able to have? So, you know, uh, so I won't get too much into doing business because we're trying to sort of move on from that. But you're right. I think it was probably the most influential regular report of any multilateral organization. Uh, I mean, in terms of the reforms and so on that actually were traced back to that, right? And in some sense, actually, uh, it, 
it was a victim of its own success because it started to get treated really, uh, really seriously. You had governments of fairly large countries actually have a department for doing business, you know, which was the whole aim of that exercise was to just improve their uh, thing. And, and then we had, we had a very shameful period here at the World Bank where we didn't actually look after that project well. We let it be compromised. So what we've done now is that we've come up with a really fantastic new report. And what it does is it's more balanced than the ease of doing business. It's more representative. It's more transparent. And we think it's more constructive. Okay, so I'll just say a quick word on each one of these things. So in terms of the greater balance, the first is that we've actually included environmental aspects, gender aspects, social standards, digital developments. So uh, we've actually made it much more balanced. So, so we are talking about business regulations and so on from the viewpoint of societies rather than just businesses or just workers or anybody else. Second one, more representative. So we, so uh, those of the people who, who actually use doing business, they didn't uh, fully appreciate the fact that, that, that this was supposed to be just for small and medium enterprises. It was not for all enterprises. So one of the things that we've done is that we've actually extended this now, not just to small, medium enterprise, but also large enterprises. So in some sense, this exercise is uh, much more suited for the way doing business was interpreted because it, it was interpreted as something for the entire business sector. Now it is, right? The other thing is that back then, what we did was we used to, uh, we used to survey experts in uh, one city in most countries and uh, two cities in countries that had more than 100 million people. Um, and that was representative enough at a national level in some sense. But what we've done now is that we now have actually nationally representative enterprise service in addition to those expert service. So it's become much, much more representative in that sense. Transparent. Um, so this is a lesson that we learned from the last time. Transparency, I mean, you know, all the data are on the web, all manuals are on the web. None of the experts we survey are anonymous. Uh, we, and so that's the that's a part on the transparency. Um, so everything is done out in the open, in sunlight, bright sunlight. Uh, but now what we've also done is that we've also strengthened internal integrity mechanisms. And all of that stuff is on the web too. More constructive. So, you know, we've tried to make this a little less uh, zero-sum-ish in the sense that you, you, we don't want to encourage unhealthy competition between countries. Uh, or between parties within countries in the sense of exploiting a particular weakness of the ruling party, et cetera, right? And um, the other thing, is, of course, is that we actually want to discourage gamesmanship. So the whole idea here is not to think. So the way that the report is presented, the way that it's designed, the way that it's executed, the data that we rely on, everything has changed. This is, this, 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 this is a brand new report. Okay, so at the beginning you talked about the sort of the need for private investment to uh, to to sort of step up to achieve to save the world. <laughs> so to save the world, yes, very very low low hanging fruit goal. Um, and uh, uh, we've heard a bit about how Be Ready works and you know what it's intended to do. I guess how do you hope that Be Ready will help you achieve that sort of first goal of of stoking private investment and uh, and helping it to save the world. So uh, I guess uh, uh, the, the uh, broadest way to think about this Alice, is to sort of say, okay, you know, what is it that we are asking? Our uh, what is it that we are asking governments to do? I mean, essentially, what we are saying is to create a better environment for business, right? So now that's an easier thing to say than to actually do. So what we are trying to do with this report is break that down into a thousand indicators per country uh, based on 2000 data points for each country, right? And so what we are trying to do is that actually help governments in, in, uh, in uh, to, to uh, break this problem of improving the conditions for business into manageable pieces, right? So now 
uh, given the fact that it's not just the things that B Ready covers that actually matter for the investment climate. I mean, like things like monetary and fiscal stability matters, infrastructure quality generally matters, and so on, right? The size of the economy matters, those kind of things. So one of the things I think that the best way to think about it is that they should be that that we would like be ready to be used with some responsible use warnings, right? And so there are you know, three or four of them. So the first one is don't consume be ready raw, okay? It's going to give you a stomach ache, okay? Um, um, and don't consume it on an empty stomach either, okay? It'll give you a stomach ache again. Um, so uh, use it with other data like fiscal and monetary quality and things like that. And then you start to sort of see your uh, thing. Now, the second thing is remember what the report is assessing. So we don't want people to say something like, you know, how can you say that Nepal is doing okay on operational efficiency when the Nepalese economy is really doing badly and the Nepalese are leaving in droves? You have to remember that that we are, we are basing that operational efficiency on a subset of those 2000 data points. So before you criticize the thing, you, you know, uh, this is not a smell test. Of the country, this is an actual. Uh, th 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 this is this is an assessment based on indicators that are as objective as we could make them, right? So that's the second part. And so, just because uh, uh, you know, you, you can have an economy that is doing poorly, and you can have a business ready environment that is improving a lot. Those two things can be true at the same time. Yeah. The second thing is that. You know, uh, we are trying to sort of not get countries to focus just on one thing. So one of the things that we uh, have done here is that we don't have one aggregate indicator, one aggregate ranking for a country, right? So we instead have three. One has to do with the quality of laws. The other one has to do with the quality of public services that are used to support these laws. And then, and the third part is the efficiency with which these services and these laws can be complied with or these services can be used, right? So, so the, the, there are these three categories. Now, when we did an aggregate ranking, you could have a country that actually comes out right on top. And what was hidden then was that it actually didn't do that well on one aspect, let's say operational efficiency, but it still came out on top. Now, now what will happen is that you'll see that this country is actually doing really well on laws, is doing really well on public services, but then there's one aspect of operational efficiency in which it doesn't do well. And this can be exploited for political gains by the opposition and so on. They shouldn't do that because they should take the overall, the overall report card, not just one particular aspect of it. So I'm actually giving you a particular example from Croatia here. Croatia is doing brilliantly actually on both the laws as well as on the public services to support these laws. There's one aspect of, of operational efficiency in which it could do better. It probably is already working on that right now, right? But you could easily have this exploited for political purposes. You know, say, oh, uh, we used to do really well, but now we're not doing well on that aspect. That's one of the sort of the flip side of not having an aggregate ranking. Uh, 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 two real quick things, sorry. One is, Exercise common sense. There's never any substitute for that, right? So if the report has indicators that are based on a survey that was done in August of 2023, and the country has been bombed after that, okay, then obviously you have to understand that what we are trying to do, that what we are trying to do with the report is to show what was the quality of the laws that we cover here and the public services that support them and so on before all of those things happen. One just has to exercise common sense there. And then, uh, uh, so, so I think in general, we are putting all of these data up on the web. We are making everything transparent and so on. So before you praise the report, I see there'll be a lot to praise in the report you'll see, including the cover like this one here. Uh, but before you praise Valeria in a report, uh, read the report. Okay, and before you criticize the report, read the report and look at the data, okay? And then you'll actually see that the assessments 
that that are summarized in the report are actually based on a massive amount of data and and these data are going to be public goods. Mm-hmm.